On the evening of the 4th, the Chinese aircraft carrier Liaoning sailed through Okinawa, Japan and entered the Pacific Ocean. On the same day, the U.S. aircraft carrier USS Roosevelt also sailed through the Malacca Strait and entered the South China Sea. Meanwhile, the United States Coast Guard and Taiwan Coast Guard will form a working group, and Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga will go to Washington, D.C. to discuss issues regarding Taiwan with U.S. President Joe Biden as the cross-strait tension is quickly increasing. The Japanese Ministry of Defense announced on the 4th that a fleet of six Chinese battleships, including the aircraft carrier Liaoning, was detected entering the Pacific Ocean from the Mayako Strait of Japan on April the 3rd, sailing southward through the eastern waters of Taiwan. Among the six ships, there are three missile destroyers, one escort ship, and one high-speed combat supply ship. One of the missile destroyers is the largest Ren High class destroyer of the Chinese Navy, Nanchang, which has sailed around the Sea of Japan for a week in March. Japan's Ministry of Defense had concluded that the six ships are part of China's efforts to strengthen its maritime operations in the East China Sea, and Japan is stepping up monitoring the fleet's movements. The Chinese Navy spokesman Gao Xucheng claimed in a press conference that the Liaoning carrier fleet was training the waters around Taiwan to test and improve the ability to protect national sovereignty, security, and development interests. He also mentioned that the Chinese Navy will continue to organize similar exercises and training activities as planned. On the same day, Japan's Kyoto News reported that the Japanese government was preparing to deploy the most sophisticated stealth fighter aircraft, the F-35B, at the Air Self-Defense Forces base in Miyazaki Prefecture. The report said that the move is intended to strengthen the defense of the southwest side of Japan, including the Senkaku Islands, also known as the Diaoyu Islands in China, in view of the maritime activities of the Chinese Communist military. The USS Theodore Roosevelt CVN-71 passed through the Malacca Strait on April the 4th and entered the South China Sea, while the USS John S. McCain also routinely passed through the Taiwan Strait on April the 7th. In terms of airspace, China continued to send military aircrafts into Taiwan's air defense identification zone. Taiwan's Air Force released news on the 5th that 10 Chinese military aircrafts, one Yun-8 anti-submarine aircraft, one KG-500 early warning aircraft, four J-16s and four J-10s had intruded into Taiwan's Southwest Air Defense Identification Zone, ADIZ, with the Y-8 also flying to Taiwan's southeast airspace. On April the 7th, Taiwan Foreign Minister Joshi Joseph Wu said during a meeting with foreign media at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that the United States clearly sees the danger of a possible Chinese attack on Taiwan. He added that there is no doubt that we have the will to defend ourselves. If we need to go to war, we will go to war. If we need to defend ourselves to the last day, we will defend ourselves to the last day. The Taiwan Central News Agency reported that on March 25th, AIT issued a press release stating that in the presence of Acting Assistant Secretary, Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs Sang Kim, and the Director of International Affairs and Foreign Policy Advisor for the United States Coast Guard and Castiglione Cotado, AIT Executive Director Ingrid Larson and Taiwan Ambassador Xiaobin Kim signed a Memorandum of Understanding on the establishment of a Maritime Patrol Working Group. This is the first MOU signed by both sides since the new U.S. President took office. Under the agreement, the U.S. Coast Guard will provide training support to Taiwan to ensure that the latter's Coast Guard can respond appropriately to various threats. In response to the increasing infringement of Taiwan-controlled waters by mainland fishing and sand dredging vessels, Taiwan will also upgrade its Coast Guard capabilities with new vessels that can be added to the Navy in times of war, according to the MOU. Some analysts note that Beijing has often used gray area operations in the past, such as using Coast Guard vessels and militia vessels disguised as fishing boats to clash with neighboring countries. It effectively deployed large integrated fleets in the South China Sea and neighboring waters to collaborate in warfare and occupy disputed maritime areas. Beijing's recently passed Coast Guard law contains laws that encourage conflict, which has been questioned by many countries as a violation of international conventions and interpreted as preparations for a possible war. 
The Nikkei Asian Review reported on April the 7th that Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga will visit the United States and meet with President Joe Biden on April the 16th. After the summit, the U.S. and Japanese leaders will make a joint statement on the importance of stability in the Taiwan Strait and will also prepare to oppose China's promulgation of the new Coast Guard law together. This will be the first time in 52 years since 1969 that the leaders of the two countries have jointly drawn attention to the importance of the Taiwan Strait. On April 4th, Suga said in a Fuji TV program that with Japan and the U.S. cooperating to maintain intimidation and resistance, it is important to create an environment that can be resolved peacefully by Taiwan and China. He stressed that the situation in Taiwan was very important to Japan. In fact, the friction in the Taiwan Strait has become shorter and shorter since 2019. Current affairs commentator Wen Zhao pointed out that in the past, Japan has been very cautious about its relationship with China and Taiwan. However, Beijing has shown itself to be increasingly unconcerned about the feelings of other neighboring countries and has stepped up its military activities against Taiwan while intensifying its actions against the Senkaku Islands. Moreover, the new Coast Guard law provides a basis for the fight over the Senkaku Islands. This has given Japan a strong fear that the Chinese Communist Party will take the Senkaku Islands, Diao Yutai, into its custody along with the armed unification of Taiwan. Zhao added that Japan is quite nervous and must have a more definite attitude and cooperate with the United States. In an interview with the Japanese news agency, Taiwan's representative in Japan, Chia Tiong Teng, said that China views the United States as its biggest enemy, followed by Japan, that once Taiwan is unified by China, Japan will have to face the threat of China directly. So if Taiwan goes into a state of emergency, Japan will not be able to stay out of it. Ase Ito, an associate professor at the University of Tokyo's Institute of Social Sciences, said in an interview with The Voice of America on, on April the 7th that since 2012, the Japanese government has promoted a dual strategy of hedging and cooperating with China in a moderate geopolitical environment, but now China's geopolitical and economic influence has fundamentally changed. He said that the risks from China have now become geopolitical risks and the Communist Party's intervention in the market and weaponization of economic dependence under China's more centralized political system are real risks for Japanese companies as well as Western companies. Since last year, democratic countries around the world have been taking action against the threat of China. In late 2020, the U.S. signed the Taiwan-U.S. Framework for Infrastructure Finance and Market Building Cooperation with Taiwan and similar cooperation with Australia. Recently, the White House and President Biden stated that these cooperation structures and projects are aimed at China. Japan also signed a trade and military cooperation agreement with India last year. In addition, from April 5th to 7th, members of the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue consisting of the United States, Japan, India, and Australia, also participated in the French-led La Perrault's multinational joint military exercise. The media have pointed out that the joint action of these democracies is a warning and counterbalance to China's actions, but Beijing's recent actions reflect that it is not backing down at all, but rather going one step further. Although the encirclement of Beijing seems to have formed, Taiwan international relations scholar and professor of political science at National Taiwan University, Chang Guo Cheng, warned that after World War II, the United States had two incidents of strategic ambiguity in the Indo-Pacific region that led to the development of the Korean War and the Vietnam War, respectively, so Taiwan should be more prepared for itself. Zhang said the U.S. intervention in the Taiwan Strait could come in many forms, but it is not necessarily effective or as direct as many thought. According to his observation, the United States still adopts an ambiguous strategic attitude towards Taiwan and Beijing, and Taiwan's military cooperation with the U.S. is still insufficient. Taiwan's own military preparedness is also inadequate to counteract Beijing's military power. Dr. Wang Hao, a doctor of international relations at Oxford University, said in the same Taipei lecture that what can be done within Taiwan to fight against Beijing's hegemony includes a review of the military service system and the security of the industrial chain. Recently, the Chinese Communist Army's missiles were found to have used chips made in Taiwan, and that no one in Taiwan has paid much attention to this. He suggested for Taiwan's national security units to consider more sophisticated ways to respond to this issue.